street. What's up, guys? It's Troy, and I'm back in with another video. Hope my lighting is okay. I'm just gonna film this right back to back. So I'm filming some videos today. So I actually had to make notes because I wanted to break this down. I wanted to be clear how I break this down. But anyway, today I want to do a uh, chop it up with um, on Nevada Bars, um, Boar Island, which is book number 19 in her Anna Pigeon series. As you guys know, I've been talking about her all year long, pretty much. But Anna Pigeon is a park ranger, and she goes to various national parks within the series. Each featuring a different murder, each featuring a different crime, each featuring a different resolution for Anna to uncover. And with this particular book, she takes the book takes place in Ar it's, it. Uh, it makes you want to say Arcadia, but there's no R, so it's Arcadia National Park, which is, as far as I can recall, is located in Maine. I don't have a copy of the book because I had to lend it from the library, and then hopefully one day I'll buy it for myself, which is going to be real soon. I, I can feel it in my spirit. So I'm going to look at my notes here because I have to be clear about this, because yeah, it really is like that. So. First, I gotta say that the book is written in third person, which is tradition for this series. Two, there are three running narrative threads. So there's an A story. Well, just three running narrative threads. I'll keep narrative in the in the sense of characters. But, however, there are two different story threads. So there's a B story and, of course, an A story. And then Anna Pigeon, of course, the series star and protagonist is in the middle of both of these threads. So with the A story thread, Anna Pigeon is trying to uh, solve a cyberbullying case. Now, there are two characters who were introduced in book number 13, which is Heart Truth. Um, one is a paraplegic woman in a wheelchair named Heath. And the second is her adopted daughter, Elizabeth. Let me tell you, you have to read Hard Truth to know exactly how these two came together. But it is a very interesting book, man. I, I really do recommend it. But these characters, you know, they were introduced in Hard Truth, but they recurred or showed up again in book number 18, which is previous to this book called Destroy Your Angel. So Nevada Bar brought them back for this book. And let me tell you, I don't really care for these characters so much, but with Boar Island, I kind of started to actually, after all this time, warm up to Heath and Elizabeth. So, I wouldn't mind seeing them again, but, you know, at the same time, I'd rather see Anna Pigeon. But in all regards, Heath's adopted daughter, Elizabeth, is experiencing some cyberbullying girl. These, somebody, somebody crazy is calling her, you know, slut-shaming her and uh, just bashing her on the internet on on a blog that's frequented, frequented by her classmates. And then they're sending her text messages of all this crazy stuff. Child, just, you know, cyberbullying, just giving her all kinds of hell. And, you know, she's only 16. So, of course, they call in Anna Pigeon. And what Anna decides to do is because she's about to leave off to take over a place for another park ranger in Arcadia National Park, she decides to, to invite them to come along with them. Them, to sort of get away from this whole cyberbullying thing and they end up planting planting themselves onto an island which is Boar Island. Now the B story involves a woman named Denise and she's also running the narrative of this B story the majority of the time but the B story is about a woman named Denise. Denise is a park ranger who is girl she is tucked deep into her feelings because her previous boyfriend of 11 years dumped her and is and now having a child with another woman who is also they're all in the park ranger system of this particular park and you know she's just in her feelings girl she's just like I can't believe that this guy did this to me after we've been living together for 11 years. You know, he's finna get to marry this woman. He's giving this woman a baby. And here is Denise sitting all alone by herself. But that's not quite true because she discovers that she has a twin sister who is also residing in a, a sort of a community's almost outside of Arcadia National Park so they can see each other whenever they want to. Now, the situation with this particular sister, this twin sister, is that she is being abused by her husband, domestic abuse, that sort of thing. So what Denise and her sister decides to come up with is they's like, you know what, we're gonna kill your husband. We're gonna play the, the, the game here. We're gonna you're gonna have the alibi being at the bar and me, as in Denise, is gonna go and murder the husband. And they get away with that. But then of course this the wife of the husband, you know, she starts to have like second feelings, you know, she starts to second guess the whole thing. But Denise's whole point is to grab onto whatever family she can because for these two twins sisters they lost their mother they lost their father they have no history whatsoever to go back to but the only thing that really is driving them together besides the fact that their sister is that they both received these letters claiming that there's a legacy being left behind for them and so with that said you have that a story and that b story and of course investigative anna pigeon is in between all of that and with that being said i have got to say that this was this book was better than the previous book but it still was kind of one of 
uh, Nevada Bar's weakest books. But don't get me wrong, I found it at the very beginning of the book. It was, it was very strong, even though I really, like I said, I didn't have any feelings for Heath and Elizabeth, and I really wanted Anna Pigeon to just stand out more in this book. It did find, start off strong, and Nevada Bar has played with uh, the perspective of villains before or gave, you know, the narrative scope of the villain as they go about their business. And for this one, particularly, I did enjoy going to Denise's mind and going to what she felt it during the time of committing the murder and all that sort of thing. So I did like that part. But I think overall, it's just the conclusion is what kind of broke all this apart. Um, it was very melodramatic, um, very unbelievable. You know, really, when it comes to mysteries, I don't like the twin thing. The twin thing is, is obnoxious to me. And... It's a pet peeve. And there's another pet peeve I have when it comes to the mystery thing. Unless the book is really about, like, uh, clairvoyancy or psychic, like the character psychic or clairvoyant and stuff, I don't like when authors use that sort of element to give the uh, protagonist clues. That's just a sidebar of a pet peeve. So I don't like twin stories. I don't like twins in, in, story, in mystery novels. And I don't like psychics in mystery novels. And, you know, and, and the context of using a psychic as a, a tool to get a clue. So that was really what kind of annoyed me. But I think that overall, it did have a lot of the action that I love about the Anna Pigeon series. And let me tell you, even though Anna Pigeon go through so many things, sometimes I wonder if Nevada Bar is just beating up her character you know what I mean like Anna Pigeon girl she was shot with a needle beaten thrown in a trash bag thrown into the damn ocean and then she survived that because she's tough you know she survived that through a slew of uh, circumstances of course you know circumstances that wouldn't be realistic and then at the begin at the end of the novel she went through another brutal rundown with these two ladies and then you know she survived that as well and it's just like you know sometimes I really wish she would the water bar would stop beating up Anna Pigeon so much like early in the series I got it like one time in what's the book now one time in Deep South, Anna Pigeon got her ass whooped, okay? And she survived it. And that's when I was, that's when I really felt it. But then it's kind of, after a while, Nevada Bar just keeps beating up on this woman. It's like, can you stop doing that, please, okay? But yes, at the end of the day, I did enjoy the book. Um, it did have its procedurals in there. Not quite as interesting procedural um, works, but it was procedural as well. So I kind of, I got to give a nod to that because Anna Pigeon did... I kind of saw the old and the pigeon because I think after the 10th or 11th book, that's when, well, actually, after the 2008 release of Winter Study, that's when Anna Pigeon got kind of lukewarm. But I saw some of the old Anna Pigeon with this particular book, which I was really glad to see. So the procedural work, I think, was great. I really enjoyed that part. But regardless of all that, like I said, I did find the ending to each of these story threads to be very anticlimactic and very unrealistic. Um, really, as far as the cyberbullying thread, I just felt like that was a waste of time. Like, it started out so strong, so strong, and then it moved into the area where the characters was on Boar Island, and I loved how um, Nevada Bar dressed Boar Island. You know, there's like this tram that they have to get up on to go up to the top of the island. You know, they were living in the lighthouse. Um, the setting of, you know, being by the water, you know, going by the ruins, that was all nice. But at the end of the day, that A thread was just a, a huge letdown. Like, I honestly felt like that they didn't even have to go to that damn island. Like, they could have solved it previous. And the reason that they, I feel this way is because Nevada Bar did not give you, me, the reader, enough suspects to work with. There was not enough suspects for us to be led otherwise, Miss Nevada Bar, on that. So we knew exactly pretty much who the cyber bully was and pretty much why he slash she did it. So that was one of the disappointing things. I just felt like that was a waste of time. Like, we already knew what was going on with that. How she led to it, interesting. How she concluded it, awful. Like, there was, there was nothing to work with. Now, as for the B story with the, the two twins and their murdered husband, mm, unrealistic, unrealistic again. But let me tell you something about that. What she did do really well, despite all that unrealisticness, is she did a great job of dressing the character of Denise. Like, Denise being um, the killer, like I said, this is open, guys. This is an open mystery, so you know this from the jump. But with Denise being the killer, you really got to 
really good sense and understanding of what her motivation was. She really wanted to hold on to family. She really wanted her own family. You know, she doesn't have any children. She doesn't have a husband. And here she is discovering that she has a twin sister. So she was willing to do anything she could to keep this girl, this twin sister with her. And I mean anything to the point that at the end of the book, it was just not that pretty. You know, I didn't really like the ending of the, of the book. But I did understand the motivation of the character of Denise. So I do have to say that Miss Navarro did a good job of that. Still at the same time, Denise was doing a lot of unrealistic things, but just the simple fact that she wanted a family, she was going hard for it. I I connect, I understood that part. So I think Navarro Bar did a good job of dressing her villain up. But nonetheless, between the two threads of the A story and the B story, there was some there was some little uh, connect connections or connectivity or some synchronicities and certain serendipities and girls, some stuff that just Navarro Bar just tried to connect these two stories however she could and I don't know I just didn't I didn't buy it <laughs> I just didn't buy it I mean I understood it was very clear cut how she did it but it's just too you know like I said the twin storyline and then the uh mm -mm, the two, you can't you that's just it's just piling too much you know they just can't happen to be at the same place they just can't happen to be twins they just can't happen to be within the vicinity of the place that you know they're trying to find this legacy or this inheritance and then on top of that Anna Pigeon's team are are sitting right on top of you know what they're after so it, you know I, I can't that's kind of vague but I'm gonna keep it at that all in all I did think Boar Island and a pigeon number 19 was okay I think I gave it about three stars um, at the end of the day with this series I just really enjoy the Anna Pigeon character we all know that at this point so sometimes I can just be biased and I'm okay girl I'll admit that I'm just biased like I'm gonna read the next book when it come out two years from now which sucks so that's it that's Nevada Bars um, Boar Island I think I'm gonna leave now and try to do something else with myself look I'm swimming now peace